Fraud is definitely one of the key challenges that uh, banks are looking at, whether that's internal fraud or external fraud, whether that's first party, second party, third party fraud, identity frauds. These are challenges that banks face almost on a daily basis. Another challenge um, is obviously in the area of cybersecurity crime. Um, so cybersecurity uh, vulnerabilities in banks. That's an area that we also look at quite closely, whether that's in your infrastructure, whether that's in your data set, that's something that banks are very well aware of, that if there are any weaknesses, it creates that opportunity for bad actors to actually do things with your systems, with your user data, and therefore how do we kind of secure that is very, very key. I think a third area that we also look at is um, in the area of data, data related requirements. Now, whether that's privacy, whether that's confidentiality, whether that's um, uh, the need to keep uh, personal data secure for users, um, how do we kind of balance that against um, the need of organizations to be able to gather data to actually help secure users? As an organization that's 160 years old, we obviously um, are in possession of a very rich data set. However, these data could have been gathered for um, very different, many different purposes. Um, but what we've realized is they actually provide um, a lot of alternative value. So the first example I will use is um, user activities data. So we will typically gather user activity data um, in terms of trying to man our call centers, for example, knowing when users are actually at its peak and therefore um, manning our call centers to ensure that there will be the people there to actually look after the customers if and when they need any help. However, that same set of data is super interesting when it comes to fraud risk management because when a client or when a user actually then comes into our system or actually start using our application out of cycle or what we call abnormal, uh, abnormal periods, this gives us a very good data point against historical data points to actually work out whether this is actually the same user that we're actually used to because he or she is actually acting out of cycle. Obviously, being uh, an older uh, institution, we have a lot of legacy systems, but the, the move there obviously is to try to bring everything into one infrastructure, uh, into one common infrastructure. Being across 55 different countries means that that's not always easy. It's always quite challenging to be able to do so, but it is paramount that we actually start with the same base. So from a system perspective, that has to be the move. From a data perspective, again, being um, an older organization with a rich history, um, we've, we are in possession of a lot of data. However, not all of these data are cleansed. Uh, not all these data make sense at this point in time. So we will have to go through the same data journey that a lot of older institutions will have to go through, taking data, making structure of them, making sense of them, um, you know, and, and then start, start to create patterns, start to create insights, and that's how we can actually enrich ourselves.